Hello again, YouTubers. Welcome back to the Board Game Captain. I'm the Board Game Captain. And I'm Lynn. And today we're going to be counting down our top 10 out of print games. Now what this means is we're talking about games that we think really do need to come back into print, either just as a standard another printing, or in some cases we think some of the basic ideas from the game are really good, but maybe it needs a new edition and maybe it needs an update. And we'll talk about which one we think, which category we think this falls in line with. But, you know, there's been a lot of companies nowadays like um, Restoration Games now who's doing a new edition uh, with a revamping of the rules for Fireball Island, which was a classic game from the 80s that I played a lot. I mean, it was a roll and move race game, so it left something to be desired. But they're taking in the revamping it and they're, ta they're taking out those more random aspects and making it more interesting. And then um, also we've, we've been seeing a lot of older games like um, your favorite, um, Tales of the Arabian Nights, oh, yeah. which was originally released in like 82. Mm -hmm. And I guess they decided, I don't think they did much of an update to that. They just sort of reprinted it. Mm -hmm. So this is something that's been going on a bunch. So these are our picks for games that we think should not stay out of print or should get a new edition. Now, mm -hmm. I, I just sort of went through games that I had on my list that I like. Well, I own all my games, and but they're games <laughs> that I think that are important um, for re well-rounded collections, I think, and should be back in print. Or in some cases, I think that if it's an older game where it doesn't really hold up to today, it's often where I think some of the mechanics were very interesting and it could use with a new edition, like a revamping, like how Restoration Games does. So wh what did you do? I had a hard time even finding 10 games. <laughs> um, I just, I, I went through the games that we have and I just randomly searched to see if they were out of print because I, I only could think of three games that I for sure knew were out of print. Okay, now I, it was basically if I found a game on my list that was out of print, <laughs> on my list because I was having such a hard time. But I know I do know you picked a couple of games that we don't currently own. Yeah. And so what what was uh, well, are you I, just going to explain I, those when we get to them? Well or? I got to the point where I went through our entire collection. Game collection and there were games that were out of print but yet I either didn't like them or had never played them so it wouldn't make sense to put them on my list so Fair then enough. I just started thinking of games that I played as a kid that are are not in print anymore, and that's how I came up with like an extra two. All right, well, uh, there you have it. Let's, without any further ado, let's get started with our number tens. Number ten. So for my number ten game, I chose a uh, small released game from the around the late. I think it was released in eighty nine, around that time period, late eighties to early nineties, somewhere around there. I think I had picked it up right around that time period because it was a new in-store game I had seen, and that was Kinesis. Now, Kinesis is a abstract strategy two-player game. Uh, it shows a picture on the back of, whoops, upside down there, of what a game of it looks like. Now, the this was a um, part of the family of games of trying to get all of your pieces, just literally get your pieces from one side of the board to the other. But also part of the offshoot of that, that included games that allowed you to mess with the board. So the thing was, you had your pieces on either end of the board, which were known as stones. And then there were neutral pieces in the middle of the board, which were known as sticks. And stones could move one space forward or backward. But if a, one of your stones was on a stick and none of your opponent's stones were on that stick, you could move the, the whole stick two spaces forward, backward, left, or right and any combination thereof. And you could even use that to pick up an enemy's stone and still move the one extra space and pull them away from your side of the table, though, one, though once uh, both players' stones were on a piece in future turns, you wouldn't be able to move that stick. And then also after you moved, the thing about the sticks is they would always wind up connected in this big um, just mess of, of interconnected uh, branches. And after you moved, you were always allowed to move uh, your piece by sliding it along a network of connected sticks. And it could slide anywhere that was connected in the sticks and even up to one space slid off of the sticks. And it was a really cool mechanic and I love sliding the pieces around. And I don't know of any uh, modern abstract strategy games that play quite like Kinesis did. And I know this wasn't a very wide released game, but 
I liked it a lot. And also, this edition, there was another edition, which I don't like the look of nearly as much, but the 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 look of this edition I thought was really, really cool. I love the cover it's, to it. It's got, like, the elements, like yeah. water, earth, air. air. Darkness? What? Is I don't that? know. No, no, there's no fire. But, but no, it just it, it it had a really cool look to the box. The pieces looked really nice. They were high quality. That like hard kind of almost like bakelite plastic. Mm -hmm. And I really liked this game. And and this is one I would love to see if somebody would buy the rights to. And just I mean, I don't even think this needs a rules update. This just needs. It's a very simple rules game. It takes five minutes to learn. I just think it needs to reprinting. Okay, my number ten is. Uh... The Mass Effect version of Risk. It we only played uh, the main, um, the main game, but it does have some different play modes, including a card and dice game that we never tried. It was very basic. The the the, the main game was more interesting. Yeah, I mean the main game is is basically Risk in the Mass Effect universe. No, but there was more to it. The sides were asymmetrical. They were, but it wasn't all that different from regular Risk. Okay. Um. So, I mean, this is on my list basically because I love Mass Effect. <laughs> yeah, this first... And I don't I don't understand why this particular re-theming of Risk wasn't a hit. Mass Effect is so popular, but it kind of fizzled out and didn't really go anywhere. And actually, we, we've got quite a few different versions of Risk, and this is one of the more fun versions. This was really cool. Yeah, well, we, when, well I got to... I was the Reapers, right? Yeah, you, you like being yeah. the Reapers, yeah. All right, well, let's move on. Number nine. Now, the number nine on my list is a game that comes from a novel. So now I, I like to read quite a bit, and uh, so does Lynn for that matter. And now from the series of books, the um, the John Carter of Mars series or the Barsoom series, depending on what you want to call it, the fifth book in the series was The Chessmen of Mars. And it was a, a, a one of the better books in the series. And in it, they introduced the the, na the game Jatan, also known as Martian Chess. Now, in an appendix in the back of the book, they had the rules to play the game, which was really kind of cool. And apparently, way, way back in the day, in the first half of the, no of the um, 20th century, there were imprint copies of the game that were being sold because of the popularity of the, uh, the book series. But... I went, after reading it, I went looking for it, and I couldn't find anybody who was producing a copy of Jatan anymore. So I made my own copy so that I could play it. And it's a little rough. Um, it functions. I've got, uh, I've burned uh, symbols for all the different pieces into the pieces there. And this is my copy of Jatan. But as you can see, I'm not much of a craftsman, so it's, it, it's a bit rough. And I would love it if somebody would print a copy of Jatan. It's very interesting. It has a similar style to chess, plays in it as an abstract strategy game, but the pieces have very different and very unique moves. Also, the board is larger than a normal chess board, uh, which a normal chess board is only eight by eight, but this one is a full 10 by 10, uh, all, uh, especially because it needs to accommodate, there's a larger variety of pieces in here. And, um, it's actually quite a functional game. There was only one issue in the original appendix rules, which people have generally come to a consensus on online in regard to how it works. But this is one I would love to have an actual, actual professionally produced copy of, and that is Jutan. My number nine is Zombie Pox. Um, it's on the back, you can see how it's set up. It, you're basically, you're trying to stop a zombie outbreak. And I, it was some, um, the people who designed it are like scientists or something. And they were trying, they were using it to try and, um, explain like herd immunity and how vaccination works to people while mm -hmm. making it fun. So they used the zombie, it actually you know? really feels that way too. Yeah. And I mean, I mean, it's, it's fun. You can play it, you can play it solo. You could play it, uh, with, I don't know what. How many people it goes up to? Oh, oh, this is one up to, to four. four. Up to four. One yeah. to four. Yeah, and I mean, I have fun playing it. I and, enjoyed this game. I, it wasn't bad. I appreciate that they're trying to teach people something while also having fun, kind of yeah. like Jules Verne. 
And I, I do love Jules Verne that he tries to teach you while also having an adventure. I don't like this game as much as you do, but I did like it. And I did think it was fun. So, you know, there you are. It's, it's, it's a pretty good game. Number eight. So, uh, my number eight game that I think needs a reprint is Lock and Key the Game. Now, this is a game based on a graphic novel series, uh, which I have not read, but I understand is a graphic novel series that is inspired by the Cthulhu mythos. And the game itself is very interesting. It's got a bit of a bidding mechanic to it, along with um, a semi-cooperative but also competitive play style and a bit of bluffing. And it's weird. So, like, you, you flip up these challenges and you go around the table and you can commit cards to the challenge to try to defeat it, but you, most of the cards are committed face down. Some of them let you do them face up and you get abilities for doing them face up. But you can be bluffing someone trying to be like, oh, yeah, I'm committing a lot of stuff to help you, and you're really not because you have some sort of ulterior motive. But as long as you, you at the end of the challenge, you flip them face up, if you have enough strength to defeat the challenge, whoever committed the most strength to it gets to score the card. And whoever committed the second most strength to it gets a secondary bonus effect, which usually allows them to get other cards or other things. But this is a really fun um, game that does some things mechanically that you don't see too many other games do. And I think it's a bit sad that it's out of print right now, because I, I quite like this one. <laughs> My number eight is Gothic Doctor. Wait, is Gothic Doctor out of print? Yeah, it wasn't even available through their website. Wow. Well, I I didn't even realize it had gone out of print. Um, so basically, you are a doctor that is trying to cure uh, monsters from gothic literature of their afflictions. Mm. And you have to... It, it's hand management and... Um, right? Set collecting. Set collecting because you need like to... To cure the invisible man, you need like five different things, and mm, yeah, and like to cure. There's like funny things, like for the, all the vampires, you need fang extraction yeah, to cure yeah. them, and garlic yeah. and holy water. Yeah. <laughs> and this is only not on my list because I didn't realize it was out of print. Oh yeah, this would have been on my list if I knew it was out of print. I didn't know it was. It's a fun. This is a really fun game. Mm -hmm. I like this game a lot. This is actually, um, I think this was one of the first two games we reviewed on this channel. Yeah. Like way back in the beginning. But yeah, I, I like this game a lot. I, I'm very sad to know that it's out of print. I had no idea. Number seven. So my number seven out of print game is a tiny little release, independently released game called Outer Earth. Now, I like Outer Earth for a lot of different reasons. And this is a game that I really do like. And I wish it had gotten a wider release. And I wish some people had noticed and had... Um, you just had a bad time with it because of some bad deals. But this is a great game. The artwork is beautiful and really unique and quirky. And there's a, there's this awesome bidding mechanic for turn order where you where you do a kind of like auctioning system. And then they have this really interesting thing with these resource cards that, that have um, specific lines of color. So you have to place them in certain orders where, where the previous pipe... Let's see if there's a picture on the back. Um... They show some there where you have these lines of color and the next card you place has to have an intake where the last card had an outlet to uh, match up. And then you, you set collect numbers of them to be able to score them. And this was a really cool game. I like this game a lot. And actually, I wish it hit the table more often. But but uh, you had a bad experience during your first <laughs> couple of games of it because of some bad deals and, and you're refusing to play. But I mm. like Outer Earth. My number seven is a game that I don't have anymore and that the board game ha captain has never heard of until I mentioned it. <laughs> that, that's correct. I, I did so, not know this game existed. I got some pictures on my phone. It's the game Notability. It came with a baby, baby grand piano. That's a picture of the, uh, that's the, the box. box. And then that's what it looked like. There's a little, p a little electronic piano and it had a little card with three options on it. And you had to pick which one you wanted. Then the person would play the song on the little piano. And you had to guess the name of the song. And I I just had fun playing the piano. The little baby, baby girl. I did not know this, <laughs> this game existed. It seems really weird. But, um, so are you going to be looking for this one in like flea markets and antique stores? I think, to see if you can I've find actually, a copy? I think, I, I actually think I... 
I saw a copy at the Volo. Um, the, the antique the mall, mall? The antique mall. But it was open and I was like, uh, is it even going to work anymore? Can you even change the battery? Like, I don't even know. You probably can. I'm sure, I'm sure <laughs> you can. Number six. So for my number six out of print game, I have the tiny little game of Straw. Now this was put out by AEG, also known as Alderac Entertainment Group. And this is a game that I was recommending to anyone who had elementary school age kids to help them with addition and subtraction. Because this game is constantly doing addition and subtraction problems and yet making it fun. Because you're, you're adding and subtracting weight from, from the camel as you put things on or, 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 give, uh, or play a flying carpet, which then carries some of the weight for them, so it subtracts mm -hmm. some of the weight. And, yeah, this, this game is, is tons of fun for adults and also educational for children. And this is a game that, in my opinion, should be in any family's game collection and should never be out of print. And it, it surprised me when I found out it was out of print. So that was straw my number six my number six is merchant of venus mm. um it's a fun pickup and deliver game in space um i actually i was surprised that this was out of print this i didn't realize it was out of print i don't know what happened but this actually okay so this was uh they had a much older version of merchant of venus fantasy flight revamped it with this edition which is great i thought this great this edition was great but it went out back out of print pretty quickly i don't know if they didn't do enough to market it or what well, or if people was, didn't realize how awesome it was i was thinking about it and i mean the firefly game is still in print right yeah and i was realizing that most games that have some sort of ip connected to them mm. especially an ip that isn't active anymore like firefly doesn't have a tv show or anything yeah. anymore they usually go out of print, like the Mass Effect one, you know, like they, it was in and, I mean, it was, the Mass Effect risk was in and out of print really quickly. We had trouble getting it and we tried to get it right away. Yeah. And so I was just, I was just thinking that maybe the Firefly game, which is basically a pick up and deliver game in space. It's very just, similar. It's just, it's just the same type of game and more popular. It might be. It might be. Yeah. But uh, that being said, I think there's room in, in your collection for both personally. And I, I quite like Merchant of Venus. I'll, I'll still play that anytime. Number five. So my number five of games that are out of print is Parade. This is... A fantastic game where you you line up this parade of cards and you have to play one at the end of the parade and then whatever number the cards are all numbered and they're of different suits the number that number of cards are safe you don't have to take them after that any cards that either match the color of the card you played or of the same number or lower than the card you played you have to take and you don't want to take cards because cards are points and points are bad in this game and mm -hmm. you want to have the least points and this is a game, again, this is a game that, to me, really feels like it should be in just about everybody's collection as one of those lightweight, icebreaker, introductory type games. I love this game. We play it with new people we're introducing to the hobby all the time. And, I, again, I was shocked to find out this had gone out of print. But, it, yeah, it had. And mm -hmm. uh, I really would... I really think Parade should come back into print. Uh, this one was published by Z-Man Games, this edition. Uh, I really would like either Z-Man to, to, to print another edition or someone else to buy the rights from them and do it because this is a fantastic game and, and this definitely deserves more attention than it got. Mm -hmm. And that is Parade, my number five. And the box is pretty. The box is very pretty. <laughs> I agree. My number five, you mentioned already, is Straw. Mm. Um, I hate math. Numbers are not my friend, but... I do find this game fun to play, and I do ask to play it once in a while, even though it's mathy. This is this is this is my way of of, of sneakily <laughs> getting you to do more math, so your math is slowly getting better. <laughs> is is I just keep asking to play straw. Number four. Now my number four is a game I thoroughly enjoyed as a kid. I used to play it a lot. I actually did a video on this recently. And this is not one that I think needs a straight up reprint. Instead, I think this game needs a new edition, kind of like how Restoration Games has been doing where they update the rules a little bit. And that is Lone Wolf and Cub. 
Now, this was one... Um, I think this was the very first of the adventure book type games I ever played where you got to go on adventures and, some, and someone else would read something from a book to you and give you options. Similar to games like Tales of the Arabian Nights or um, what's, what's the other... A Near and Far mm -hmm. and also Above and Below. Similar to these sort of games. Now... I really like this game a lot, but I do know it needs but an update. I did notice it's only one to two players, where all those other games can go up to like. Five yes, or this six. is this is um, this was the first game also that I ever solo played. Mm -hmm. I solo played this game. Now I'm never really a big solo gamer, but I solo played this game because I just loved the adventures and I loved going on the adventures. But um, and when you play it two players, there is very little interaction between the two people. Usually, you just both go on your own adventures. Um, and mostly avoid each other, but that's fine. Oh, I did. So you don't interact. Well, it's it's like with Tales of the Arabian Nights. You don't actually oh, okay. do much running into each other in Tales of the Arabian Nights, do you? It's similar to that. Yeah. You just sort of like it's like I'm over here, and I find a weird spirit in a building who challenges me to a sword fight, and you're over there, and you're fighting off robbers. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and then you go and do your own thing, and I read for you, and you read for me. But um, I liked this game a lot. Uh, I love samurai themed games. It's based on a really cool movie, and I would love to see someone do a new edition of Lone Wolf and Cub. Is that supposed to be a baby? Yeah, that's the cub. I the Lone Wolf is the like samurai, a... the cub is the baby. I thought they meant like an actual cub, like a bear cub. No, because he's the Lone Wolf, and, and that's oh. his cub, is his baby. It's an ugly baby. He, he traveled... <laughs> Look at the face. It's an illustration! Well, it so... looks fine. Don't listen to her. It looked, oh, it's a really cool... I like the illustration. It's a really cool illustration. And the board looked really awesome. That's what the board and cards actually looked like it's in like the game. It was, it was very cool game. It's like a four-year-old man's face on an infant. You need, you need to stop attacking <laughs> my games. You are mean. Anyway, my number four is Parade. Oh, that's awful. you have already mentioned. <laughs> I know I didn't. <laughs> I'm taking it back because you've been so mean to my game. No, it'll come up when you're gonna you're gonna rag on one of my games. <laughs> oh. oh God, what's gonna? I, I, I'm I'm kind of wondering what's coming. But okay, no, but I yeah, like Red. This is the, this is a fun game, and it's pretty. Even the cards are pretty. No, it is. It's a very attractive, and it's. I seriously, that is one that. Um, I really I think, think like should we be were the only people that bought it. Yeah, but everyone who played it with his loved it from from young to old. Male or female, everyone has loved that game. Like I and and there, but but none of them have ever heard of it until we pull it out. We pull it out and they're like, "Parade? What's that?" I'm like, "Well, let's show you." I seriously don't understand. I I don't know. Maybe they just didn't do a good, do a good enough job of getting the word out about it, or maybe it was the maybe maybe other people don't like the Alice in Wonderland theme as much as we do. Maybe it didn't it didn't click with them. I don't know. Number three. So my number three game, and this is another one that I think needs a new edition and, and, and a big update to the rules, but there were certain things in the rules that were really cool and no other game really does like it did, and that is Titan. Now this is a copy of Titan I have that was printed way, way back in the 1980s. Um, I've had this since I was a kid. This was part of the old Avalon Hill um, uh, bookshelf line. They used to make these games specifically to fit in a... A, a oh bookcase that's what they call them bookcase games they were meant to specifically fit in the bookcase and now th this was a, a a game where it it, it was kind of a, a a little bit of a war strategy but in a weird sort of abstract way where you had different forces and you would travel around the map with a bit of a roll and move mechanic you'd roll a die and you can move each of your forces that many spaces and um, you had to move in certain directions once you were moving. When you started, you usually had an option. Do I go left? Do I go right? Sometimes you can move as many as three different directions on the map. But then there was like a flow you had to go through. And if you ran into an enemy, you'd have to fight them. But otherwise, you'd land on a space. And all of the spaces had on a chart off on the side of the board, it would show you, well, these are the kinds of creatures that are available in the space. And it would start with the most basic creature, like, say, a gargoyle. And it'd say, well, if you have a gargoyle, you can get another gargoyle. But if you have, you know, two gargoyles, you can, you can sh reveal those two gargoyles and you can recruit a gorgon. And if you have, like, two gorgon, you could reveal them and get a, a serpent or whatever, a giant, a giant serpent or whatever it was. Um, I'm just using that as an example. I know that's not actually one of the trees, but that's how it used to work. And that moving around and recruiting stuff was just incredibly fun on its own. The problems with this game which need to be fixed are this game was made to be played 
with quite a few players, but then had player elimination, it could go on forever, and that is an issue. I think they should write in a way where one player gets eliminated, the game ends, and you count up points, and each of the monsters mm -hmm. are worth a different number of points, and you just win. And that would make it a much quicker game and, and much more fun. Also, the battles, because if two people are doing a battle, you actually played out the battle on a little mini board. And while you're doing that, everybody else is sitting around twiddling their thumbs, and that's another one of the minor problems with this game. I think they should do a quicker battle system where you don't actually play it out on a actual board. You just sort of throw down the pieces and see who wins, and the other people lose, lose their pieces. You lose most of your pieces, and you would just move on would be great. If you, managed, if you managed to make an update to the rules that did both of those, I think you could turn this into a more modern game, though. Because the whole, the weird... Um, the roll and move thing also maybe could be replaced with like a press your luck dice and then whatever die you wind up with is what you can can actually move. Might be more interesting. Um, but the whole moving around to try to get to the right spaces and recruit the right monsters was really fun. And that's something I don't see any other modern game do and I'd love to be able to do that again in a more modern setting. So that is my number three, Titan. My number three, I don't have a physical copy of, so I got a picture. It is called Nightmare. If you were anywhere besides North America, Closer. it was called Atmosphere. Um, and yeah. that was Atmos and then F-E-A-R because it's it's uh, supposed to be a scary game that you play in the dark. <laughs> no. And, well, I did find out while I was uh, doing research that... Um, they did it did get a re a re-release mm -hmm. with a dvd where they claimed it was different every time okay but then that went out of print as well well, so, but I mean, I had never. I I mean, I don't even remember even hearing about it being reissued with a DVD that changed up the story. Because the v, VHS tape, it right. was obviously it was the same every time you played. No, I had a friend who I never owned this one. We but should I, probably say what the in case I knew. I didn't like say what the game, how the game was played, and I'm talking about DVDs on. and VHS tapes. <laughs> go on, go on. Basically, it was a, it was a roll and move game where you're trying to collect keys mm -hmm. to get out the gate. And there was, well, I forget his name. His name is like the gatekeeper. Gatekeeper. A gate. Because you, you had to go, you, yes, my gatekeeper. You would put in a VHS tape in your VCR, <laughs> and the gatekeeper would come on every you're, once in a while. You're dating us. Yeah. He would come on every once in a while and give you things to do. He would either say the youngest player or the player whose turn is next. You need to do whatever or punish you for things and well he, it would usually be if you didn't answer quickly enough if you didn't answer he'd say if you haven't answered by now um and then he would punish you he'd give you yeah. like a, he's like if you haven't answered this if you did answer do this yeah yeah and and basically you, you had to get someone had you had to collect all the keys and get off open the gate before the end of the tape yeah and then um like I said before, they reissued it with the DVD that changed things up so mm. every game wasn't the same. Um, and then, I don't know, I guess... I mean, I didn't hear of it. No one else apparently did either because it's well, different again. <laughs> yeah. I, well, okay. I I played this with a friend of mine who owned a copy way, way back in the 80s uh, with the VHS one. And I played it once because... Well, it's always the same. It's always the same. That's the thing is, once you learn when, when and what the triggers are going to be, you can prepare for them. And um, overall, I just thought it was kind of a gimmick. I don't I don't remember liking this anywhere near as much as you do, but you apparently really liked this game. But you know what? A DVD version where it mixes it up and makes it not all the same all the time, that sounds more interesting mm -hmm. because then it would keep you on your toes. But the, the real problem is the game itself is still... It's still roll and move, collect... Things. So maybe maybe yeah. this would need to be one where they need to totally revamp it, not just turn it from a yeah. VHS to DVD, but also revamp the mechanics a bit, go off the same basic concept, but maybe and a restorations version right, yeah. where they redid the it. The characters could have asymmetrical player powers. Oh, because, now you're I cooking mean, with gas. It was oh, just yeah. really like you picked a color. You yeah. know? None, no one was different. Uh, asymmetrical player powers, um, a ran more randomized events, and a um, uh, as well as an update to the rules, mm -hmm. I think would be necessary to keep make this one playable again. Yeah. Number two. So my number two was a game Lynn already talked about, and I talked a little bit about with her, which was Merchant of Venus. I love this game. This game is amazing. I think that this is 
one of uh, this is I think my second favorite uh, pickup and delivery game of all time. My first one being, uh, currently being Wasteland Express. Wasteland Express, because Wasteland Express just, but that's newer and it, it, it really learned a lot from previous worker placement games and built on what they did and made it even better. But this is, this is a fantastic game and I really think with some better advertising and some better getting the word out there and a new printing, they might be able to, mm -hmm. uh, you know, get this selling again. I liked this game a lot. I love Merchant of Venus. So that was my number two. What's your number two? My number two is Fantasy Forest. <laughs> it is it is a mystical journey through Morley the Wizard's magical fantasy forest. It was based on it's a basically a D and D version of Candyland. That's exactly what it is. Because it was for, for children, but you know there is fighting. There's, it's not, you use cards to move instead of rolling a die, and you also... Well, there was only, there was there, cards in, in you, Candyland, too. Didn't you roll, though? You no, know? no, you, you, you used cards also, but okay. I, I don't think you did but the hand management you have in this. It's a little more There's advanced. hand management, and you can also attack other players, and, mm -hmm. and so, I mean... You know what? There's a bit more to it. Okay, so... This was made by TSR. It's, it's got an awesome picture on the back. <laughs> it, it, wow. All right, so this game was made by TSR, and this game is 100%. It is 100% TSR revamping um, Candyland to make it a, a more interesting game. And I know this is your nostalgia game. And you know what? Candyland's always in print as, as a game that kids can play. And actually, this is a better game than Candyland. So I will agree with you on that. In, and, and for parents to play with their kids, this would be a more interesting game to play with very young kids than Candyland. And it's better at teaching kids a little bit more advanced concepts like hand management because you, you uh, the way you manage the cards and then you have to use them either for moving or for attacking. You can't use them for both. And once they're gone, you discard them. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, th I mean, this this would be a, a, would be a good game for someone to reprint for kids. I don't think it's a fantastic game, <laughs> but I do agree with you that it, it would be, it would be a good game to have reprinted. I I, I think uh, maybe somebody like, uh, well I, I you know I I would hazard a guess well, if TSR had the well TSR if TSR had the copyright yeah then it would currently be owned by Hasbro because Hasbro mm -hmm. um, bought all of TSR's holdings and actually I don't know why Hasbro because I think they also do Candyland. So I don't know why they haven't done a new version of this. Maybe just because they don't want to compete with their own title. But this is better than Candyland. Hasbro, actually, you guys should totally do a new version of this. Um, and market and, it as, you know, the next step for kids after Candyland. And I just noticed this. But all the kids in the... the Forest? The, the drawing. I'm trying to get it not glary. There we go. They're all There's like one white kid. And then the rest all look like, you know... They're kids of color, which is kind of awesome for an older game. You yeah, might. from the early 80s, yeah. actually. That, that, that's a lot of nice diversity there. Though, while the illustrations are that way, all yeah, the, the kids on the back <laughs> are, are white bread. Yes. <laughs> so. Number one. Now, for my number one is a game I've talked about quite a bit. It is the Starfarers of Catan. This is my absolute favorite version of Catan. I love the space theme. I love the setting up colonies. I love the setting up of, of flying out and setting up the trade contracts with the other alien races. Um, rolling your spaceship. This is this is but one of the rolling the spaceship is the best part. This is one of <laughs> the the only downfall of this game is the quality of the components, which tend tended to break in the initial run, which we still have. I, if they do make a new release of this, they don't need to change the rules; just upgrade the components. And that's all it would need. This is a phenomenal game. Now that Asmodee owns the rights to all the Catan stuff, I really, really wish that Asmodee would do a new printing of Starfarers of Catan, maybe update the box and the artwork and, and improve the, the components a bit. But I would definitely buy a new copy because too many of our components are broken. Mm -hmm. But Starfarers of Catan is not only my favorite of the out-of-print games for my favorite out-of-print games, but this is one of my favorite games of all time. I absolutely adore this game. So there you have it. My number one, Starfares of Catan. It is also my number one. Just slide on over a little. And 
like I said, my favorite part was rolling the spaceship. Well, you loved... And see a picture of the spaceship right up here. Well, you loved that, because when you rolled the spaceship... Um, the little colored uh, if, if it would come down. And then you would get a card, which... Those cards were a card version of an adventure book. So, you... Because someone would read you what happens, and then yeah. you had to make a choice. And yeah, you, you loved those there, adventure there would book be games. A, it would be a traitor, and they would be like, do you want to give... Uh, a thing to the trader. How much do you want to give? How many do you want to give? Because yeah. it would be yes or no. So you would say yes, and then you'd you they would say okay. How many of the goods do you want to give to the trader? Or it'd be like uh, you encounter a pirate. Do you run or do you fight? Yeah. You 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 you, you uh, get a distress signal. Do you do you answer the distress signal? My favorite part was getting an encounter. I was probably like like everybody else because it was a black bead. That would come down if you got an encounter and all the other ones were just speed. And I remember, like, I would get a black bead and I would be like, yes, awesome. And, and when everybody else would get a black bead, they would be like, man, I wanted to go and do that. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to move and do things. Because <laughs> you couldn't move well, if you got an encounter. Well, you, you could move as long as it was successful. But if you got a negative, so there were some yeah. bad encounters like getting hit by pirates that if you failed, you'd be stuck for a turn. If and it, it was, was like, just all getting encounters, I would have been like, I mean, I'm already there, but I would have been more well, you there. Love, you love those games. <laughs> so there you have it. Those are our top 10 out-of-print games. So why don't you tell us in the comments down below, what are your favorite games that you really wish would come back into print or maybe have a new edition done by somebody like Restoration Games, who seems to be doing a lot of that. So let us know in the comments down below also what you thought of our choices for our top 10 out-of-print games. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like, share it on social media, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to the Board Game Captain, that's Captain spelled with a K, on YouTube. And until next time, game, game on! on.